FanDuel has recently come out with their list of NFL win totals for 2023, and they have the Chargers at nine and a half wins, and we think if the Chargers stay healthy, they can absolutely get to 10 wins. You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up and welcome into the Locked On Chargers podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Wade, joined as always by my co-host, David Drogmeyer. And we've been covering the Chargers now for seven seasons together, but this is our fifth season as a host of the Locked On Chargers podcast, bringing you your team every day. Thank you guys, as always, for making us your first listen and to make sure you never miss the show. Go subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to your podcast. And today, David, we're talking about win totals because they finally came out from FanDuel. We got our hands on them. And we want to talk about if the Chargers can be a 10-win team and what has to happen for them to do that and for them to make the playoffs because it's currently more likely that they won't make the playoffs than they will make the playoffs, which is interesting because the Chargers have pretty much the same team that had all the hype going into 2022 before all of their major injuries. But we're also going to be talking about where the Chargers stack up in the AFC West because they still have the second best best odds, but are they still the second best team in the West? And we'll also take a look at their Super Bowl odds because those are also kind of like a power rankings from FanDuel. But today's episode and where all of these numbers are coming from is FanDuel. Make every moment more. Don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. David, the win totals are out. The Chargers are at nine and a half wins according to FanDuel, which is, if I remember correctly, one less than they had in 2022 when they had all the hype surrounding them. But David, do you think that number is too low? I mean, I think when I first saw the number, I was like, man, that just doesn't feel right. I mean, it doesn't feel like the number that the Chargers are capable of achieving. And obviously, I'm a known optimist, so I I don't uh, really see them having a sub-500 record. I expect them to be able to perform better. And I mean, even, you know, nine wins is is above 500. I get that. It still feels like, you know, it's under 500. I don't see them regressing. um, And I feel like there's several reasons to feel optimistic that they can eclipse that nine-and-a-half win mark. Well, the, it's the one big thing, right? If you tell me that you're going to get better health luck than they got in 2022, I mean, I would almost guarantee a 10-win season. I would feel really, really good about it because the thing is, is I understand why you there could basically be the thought process of, okay, well, hey, we hyped him up too much last year, and that's yeah. a team that only got 10 games or 10 wins, right? Yeah. When we put it at 10 and a half, they went under. Can they go under again? The other thing is, though, is you missed at least seven games from Joey Bosa, Rashawn Slater, Keenan Allen, J.C. Jackson, Donald Parham, Jalen Guyton, Austin Johnson, Tito Abonia. Like, and some of those names are obviously not weighted the same, but that's big-time players for them that miss games. And then you talk about missing four games from Mike Williams, Josh Kelly. You missed most of four games from Derwin James last season. Like, these are all Corey big... Lindsley missed some, some time yeah, as well. Corey Lindsley was in and out of a lot of games, too, even mm-hmm. besides the ones he just straight-up missed. So yep. it just, for me, David, like, if you if they got to 10 wins last year and now you have this team – coming back and you get just even a little bit healthier with your new head athletic trainer whenever that guy comes into the building like yeah i don't think it's crazy to think that especially because we know how much bad stuff went down last year like we know how many bad you know we were in it when it happened and saw them kind of struggle their way to 10 wins and knew how much better they really should have and could have been so like i don't think it's crazy to think that with better health luck this could be a 10 win team not at all. It is not crazy to fathom that at all. And then, and I think there was a couple of good things that came out of those injuries. Like, for example, you knew, you know, you now know what you have in Jamari Sawyer, and you don't sure. know if he would have had an opportunity to go out there and play and show you what he was capable of doing if Rashawn Slater did not get hurt. And so now you know that you have a guy, you have a player, and you're plugging him in to be a starter alongside Rashawn Slater on that offensive line. But having an all pro left tackle back, I mean, you you can't really (laughs) quantify how important that is. Also, if you have good health from Keenan Allen, I think he has shown you even when he came back from the injury that he is still very much an impact player, a guy that can uh, get first downs, is a third down monster, still makes big catches. 
so you know that that's very important. And then Joey Bosa to me is one of the bigger ones because when he's healthy and he's on the football field, he's one of the more complete defensive players in the NFL. What he is yeah. able to do getting after the passer, what he is able to do stopping the run. And, you know, he's just he's a menace. He's just so hard to defend because of how advanced he is as a pass rusher. It's just scary to have to worry about that. And then, you know, we were talking so much about Keenan, excuse me, about Khalil Mack and Joey Bosa playing on the field at the same time that we never really got to see it materialize. Only just a very small amount. And I think the biggest wild card here, Daniel, is J.C. Jackson. I mean, yeah. what is, you know, what is J.C. Jackson going to look like? Is he going to be able to come back? And do, if he does come back and he is the J.C. Jackson of old, that could be a big, big wild card for this Chargers team. And if he doesn't, you know, that's another position that looks like you need more depth at, right? And yeah. the thing is, too, is it's unrealistic to think, okay, hey, all of these guys who of course, a lot of have injury history are going to just play this entire season out. But I do think the other part of hopefully having a new head athletic trainer is getting these guys back quicker because Please. it just seemed to take way too long and we're, you know, way too many guys going over what the projected time was, right? Because yeah. it just didn't seem like their training staff was getting these dudes back out there quickly enough. And I don't think all these guys are going to stay healthy next year. Do I think it could be a lot better? Yeah. yeah. Do I think Rashawn Slater could play all season? Definitely. Yeah. Do I think that, you know, Mike Williams and Keenan Allen can have a year like 2021 when both of them stayed healthy pretty much all season and Justin Herbert put up borderline MVP numbers? Yeah. Like yeah. that still is a possibility as well. You have to, you know, have some other things go right for you. It's not just sure. health, and we'll talk about that in the next segment. But I do think another part of the reason why it's at nine and a half is just the Chargers' opponents this year, right? Ten and a half yeah. last year, nine and a half this season. And if I think on the surface you could look at this and say, hey, this could be a tougher schedule going into 2023. It definitely could be. I mean, the one thing you know right off the bat is that you're going to have to play the Kansas City Chiefs twice next sure. season. And you know that, you know, hey, they're just defending Super Bowl champions for a reason. And then you have the Buffalo Bills. That's going to be a tough game. The, the Dallas Cowboys, they're a quality team. The Vikings could be a, a, di a difficult challenge. Maybe the Jets too, if they have if they have their new quarterback Aaron Rodgers. I mean, all of those kind of opponents, and even the, the I'll throw the Lions in there too. I mean, that's a, a team that Lions definitely could definitely right. sneak up on you. I mean, that's a quality football team now. So, yeah, I mean, I think there is some reasons to be concerned uh, about the the opponents that the Chargers are going to be playing next season. Yeah, you get the AFC East, right? And it's yeah. just the Patriots are never an easy team for the Chargers, and that might be the no. worst team in the division right now. The Dolphins yeah. have the same Super Bowl odds as the Chargers. The Bills have better odds. The Jets have better odds at yeah. a Super Bowl than the Chargers. So the AFC East is a tough draw because you get one of the three other AFC divisions, right? And then you get the right. NFC North, which is kind of hard to figure out because the, yeah. the Lions scare me the most. The Bears don't sure. scare me as much, but a rushing quarterback against Chargers run defense definitely is a little scary. Vikings, huge regression. They're like 20-something as far as Super Bowl odds this wow. year after the guys they've cut. And the Packers, just a huge unknown with Jordan Love. And then right. the other kind of miscellaneous teams that you get that don't fall into the normal kind of you know teams you have to play in divisions you have to play. Yeah, Titans don't scare me as much. You know, yeah. Cowboys and Ravens, though, is a tough draw there, especially if Lamar goes back to the Ravens. It's already a really good defense. The, it, it is a tougher schedule, but like – based on what we know now because going into last year there was a gauntlet on that schedule and a lot of teams we thought were going to be a lot better that we were very afraid of especially towards the back stretch of that season you know like the rams right yeah teams fall apart quickly the, the titans, cardinals seem yeah. like they're going to be a lot better the titans seem like they're going to be a lot better the colts yeah. had matt ryan they thought they were going to be I contenders mean, the, the dolphins as well i mean they, they totally. were really really hyped up and you know obviously the chargers handled that so yeah and i mean yeah they had a, a big regression towards the end of their season too but yeah for the chargers even to make the playoffs is, is going to be a really tough thing. I think 10 wins probably gets in there, but the Chargers right now, according to FanDuel, where all these odds are coming from, have a better chance to not make the playoffs than making the playoffs. But there are a couple of things that if we think if they can do it, like the Kellen Moore hiring has to work, have to hit on some draft picks, they could definitely make the playoffs again in 2023 and hopefully 
have a deeper run there and not, you know, blow a 27 to 0 lead. But I do need to tell you guys that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and the NBA playoffs are almost here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back. If your first bet doesn't win, that means you win even when you lose. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, super easy to use, and you can bet on everything from the money line, point scores, and threes drained. And one of the best parts about FanDuel, the same game parlay where you can combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout and all of the odds we're talking about here today are from FanDuel. So if you want to bet on, you know, Chargers playoff chances, them winning the AFC West, them making it to a Super Bowl, Justin Herbert winning an MVP, you want to do that with FanDuel. And don't miss out on your chance, guys, right now because you can still get that no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Well, let's get to some more odds here and keep them moving with the Chargers playoff odds because, hey, nine and a half wins doesn't necessarily mean playoffs or no playoffs, but I did think it was interesting kind of where the Chargers lined up in their playoff odds, especially because they're in a division with the Kansas City Chiefs. So it came down to the Chargers making the playoffs at minus 102, and if you're not super familiar with gambling, that means you bet $100 to win. You basically had to bet $102 to win $100. But then not making the playoffs, you'd have to bet $120 to win yourself that $100. So the Chargers have worse odds of making the playoffs or, than they do to not to miss the playoffs. And I think a part of that, David, is because of the AFC. I mean, they're just in a loaded spot. And when you're not given a chance to win your division, you're basically fighting for one of three playoffs or wild card spots. Right. And then you just don't know you, you don't control your own destiny when you don't win your in your division. So you, you're leaving it up to chance. There's just situations where things have to go right for you. you. Like I said, you just don't necessarily control your own spot. So it's definitely more difficult. I mean, obviously, you want to win your division that, that gives you uh, some comfort going into the playoffs. But yeah, I mean, looking at the Chiefs at the top, it's hard to imagine right now that the Chargers are a better team than the Chiefs. Yeah, and it's hard to know, you know, which teams are going to be fighting for wild card spots. That's it, right? yeah. That's the other hard part of it is you just don't know kind of where everyone is at. And things change so quickly. Like, I mean, the Jets, I believe, were up 7-5 and five at one point or something along those lines yeah. and had one of those spots locked up and then lost, like, the rest of their games yeah, for crumbled. the rest of the season. But yeah. the AFC, you're talking about the Chiefs, Bengals, Bills, Jaguars, Ravens, Dolphins, Jets. All those teams are up there, you know, as far as they're not in the NFC where it would be a, a much easier path and a lot less oh, yeah. teams that you feel like are going to be super competitive. And there's no chance you're making it, you know, with a sub 500 record in the AFC, at least as we see it right now. But if the Chargers do want to make the playoffs, if they can get a run to get to double digit wins and make a playoff run, there are a few other things that have to happen besides the health, David. So what were you thinking when you thought, OK, the Chargers can definitely make the playoffs if this happens. Yeah, I mean, two things that that just came to my mind right away is that they cannot be as disastrous against the run as they have been the last two seasons. It's just been such an Achilles heel for them because when they when you can't stop the run and they're dictating what they want to do to you, it makes everything that they want to do so much more effective. It makes the play action so much better and you're just getting gashed and it's just, it makes your, it, it ruins your defense. It, it just does so many bad things for you. And also the explosive plays. I mean, so many 40, 50 yard plays that they gave up last season that can't happen. Uh, if the chargers want to be able to make the playoffs this season, it just can't. I agree with all that. I would say, you know, Brandon Staley also has to, you know, not get out coached as much in yes. 2023 if they want to yes. make a playoff run. And I think the other thing, too, for Brandon Staley is kicking kind of the curse of the third year for Chargers head coaches. Because if yeah. you go back to Anthony Lynn, 5 and 11 in his third season after going 12 and 4 in 2018, and you go back before him, right? And you go Malibu, Mike McCoy. What <laughs> happened in his third season? They were 4 and 12 that yeah. season. So it, this is been where the last two coaches have really fallen off the rails but as far as the positive things that they can do to make it i think one of it starts with uh, just a very obvious part is they're going to have to get impact players with several of their draft picks in 2023 they have to hit on some of these draft picks because they have huge depth questions at edge wide receiver tight end offensive line 
They need to add elements to the offense. And I think you would also say that, hey, they have questionable starters at linebacker with Kenneth Murray, at safety, and at corner if J.C. Jackson's not ready because then you're putting Jasir Taylor probably as your number one slot option. That's a big question mark. So I think adding talent to the defense, adding those specific elements you want to see and more explosiveness to the offense are things that have to happen in the draft. They're going to have to hit on some of these guys. Absolutely. I mean, there's no question. And because there's obvious deficiencies on the offensive side that have to be addressed. I mean, and it was, they have not been addressed up to this point in free agency. So it seems like, you know, that since, you know, that uh, seemingly has slowed down that they're going to have to hit on these picks in the draft and they're going to have to hit early and they're going to have to get contributors day, day one for year one. And it's going to have to be immediate. You can't just have these guys draft them and, and wait for them to develop. No, 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 no. The chargers are not in a situation right now where they can afford to wait for guys to develop. They need impact guys immediately if they want to be able to beat these odds. Yeah. And to just make you feel a lot better about it, you're going to have to, some of these guys are going to get forced into action and you just don't know what the timeline is, right? Maybe you don't need them day one. But maybe right. you need them week three. Khalil Mack goes out with something, uh, yeah. right? Yeah. Like maybe you need them week six and they have that little extra, you know, a little bit of extra time. But you, there's just no way you can whiff on all these picks and not think that's going to come back to bite you and potentially cost you a, sh- a chance at the playoffs in yeah. 2023. I think the other big thing for me, the Kellen Moore hiring has to work. I know we talked a lot about it yesterday just as far yeah. as why we feel like he could improve this Chargers offense specifically, even with the pieces they have right now. The other thing is, is though, With the defense, I have a lot more faith in the offense right now. I don't think the offense can afford to really take a step back and have them still be as competitive as they were last year. I think the other thing is, too, is just this is another new year of learning an offense. If that takes time, if if it doesn't gel quickly, if you get out to a hole with the schedule we just talked about, you could be in trouble. So I think that is a really huge cog in, you know, how this thing is going to work as we try to kind of envision what's going to happen in 2023. Yeah, I mean, I think you have to hope that when they install this new offensive system that there is a large contingent of plays that Justin Herbert was already comfortable with, comfortable with, familiar with, and have executed out there very well. And so you hope it's not a complete new system he has to learn because that, you know, like you said, that's going to take some time. And we saw with the defense, it took them almost two years for yeah. them to really understand the defensive scheme and be able to execute it really without having to think. Um, sure. And, you know, Justin Herbert, we know he's incredibly intelligent and very, very gifted as well. So we know that he, <laughs> he's had to do it. I mean, pretty much. But his it's just not career. him either, right? But it's like, not ideal. And also, yes, it's not just him. We it's always talk about everybody. him because it makes the most sense with him, right? But like, yeah. you know, Michael Bandy running and, and taking that and not knowing that handoff's coming to him yeah. in the biggest game of the season, right? It's, it's all right. stuff like that. And that's one bad example because it was just one thing. But like. The offensive line has to know which guys they're blocking, and the yeah. tight ends need to know who they're hitting and what their routes yeah. are like. And what the biggest thing is the verbiage, because I mean right. that's it's something that they don't come from the similar systems, Joe Lombardi and Kellen Moore, right? So like that verbiage could all change. You have to hope though, hey, it's a modification, it's a hybrid offense taking a lot of those nice things that we've seen them do before. Yes, exactly. Uh, um, but that's, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about jo- Justin Herbert and Kellen Moore and Kellen Moore getting the most out of Justin Herbert. Like That's we it. talked about on le- yesterday's show, it's just the most important thing that has to happen. If the chargers want to get to that next stratosphere, mm-hmm. Kellen Moore is going to have to be one of the reasons why. And it's just hard for me to believe that if you're telling me that Justin Herbert is going to be better than he was in 2022 and 2023, it's hard for me to imagine that team doesn't make the playoffs, right? I mean, Justin Herbert was already ridiculously elevating a lot of the players around him and really fighting through a lack of depth the entire season, whether it's without running line, at all receivers, running backs without running because he was injured himself. And that is a huge part of it. I think the last thing here I would put, I don't want to see a huge regression from special teams because I think oh, the yes. Chargers do not make the playoffs last year if they didn't have good special teams, right? We've seen them have That's, a team with the best such offense. An important point there. Yeah, and then we've seen them have the best offense and best defense and not make the playoffs in a season, right? Yeah. That's something that's actually happened to the Chargers. It's insane. Uh, it's insane. But uh, it, it, I think that's a huge part of it. Having, you know, two kickers you feel good about is a big yeah. part of it. Having Ryan Ficken is a great reason. And uh, I think, you know, as far amazing. as their return team and stuff like that, the coverage units obviously ha- can't regress. But as far as the actual return men, like at least in kickoff, you feel like that's a position they can absolutely improve. 
and yeah. be even better. Those hidden yards, man. Those hidden yards can be yeah. the difference. And that's I mean, like, it's kind of like being a defensive tackle. Like a lot of the yeah. good special team stuff is like when you don't see anything wrong. Right. When you're not seeing the big play. Well, it's, you just know, on, like, it's on the margins. Like it's just, yeah. it's on the margins of improvement. You know, it's just not always recognizable. Yeah, exactly. And it's one of the reasons. I mean, another big thing too, David, like if the Chargers want to make the playoffs, they have to do much better inside their division because guess what? They went two and four in 2022 against the AFC West. But going into 2023, they still have the second best odds to win the, the AFC West. So basically, it's still considered the second best team in the AFC West. Do they deserve it? We're going to get into it after this. FanDuel not only put out their win totals for the seasons, but they put out a bunch of other NFL futures that you guys can go check out, including the odds to win the AFC West, which has it like this. The Chiefs minus 150, Chargers plus 340, Broncos plus 460, Raiders plus 1,200. So before we <laughs> laugh at the Raiders for being so far away from the rest of the teams. Oh, sorry. Is that... <laughs> Does that seem right to you? Do you still think that the Chargers are clearly better than the Broncos and the Raiders at this point? I'm going to say yes. And and the reason for that for me is the, the Broncos are going to have to prove it to me. I mean, yeah. I understand that you brought in a new flashy head coach in Sean Payton. <laughs> and I understand that you spent a bunch of money. Well, guess what? The Chargers spent a bunch of money last offseason and that didn't get them anywhere. So... The Broncos right now are all hype, all talk. You're going to have to show it to me on the football field before I believe that you are a better team than the Chargers. So I feel like these odds are accurate. I think so. I think the Broncos, I have if they have it right with the Broncos having the best chance to be the second team besides the Chargers, because I do have a ton of respect for Sean Payton that said yeah. at one point that I would take Sean Payton as the Chargers coach, and I did yeah. feel that way. So I'm not going to, you know rain on that parade now you know that's a big move by them but russell wilson's still your quarterback yep they seem to be making a lot of different kind of changes with the uh, moves that they're making in free agency it seems like they might be trying to go to more of a power running game to protect russell wilson a little bit get javante williams back and he is a stud yes as far as the raiders go i mean swapped out jimmy g for Derek carr traded darren waller brought in jacoby myers the most damning thing for being honest, is they felt the need to go re-sign Jerry Tillery to a two-year contract. <laughs> so I think that tells you kind of <laughs> where they're at. I mean, it, it, plus 1,200. I mean, Vegas is usually not far off on these things, and they think it is a significant gap between the Broncos and the Raiders. And it is also because of who their head coach is, Josh McDaniels. Yeah, sure. And with all of those games that they had leads in last year that they coughed up, just reinforced my opinion on the fact that McDaniels is just not a good head coach. He's a d decent offensive play caller, but everything that has happened in his past does not seem to have gotten away from him very far. Yeah, and what about it, Raider fans? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the Raiders, I mean, I think to me the biggest thing is just like, what did you do defensively to move the needle? Nothing. To try to really improve what was one of your weakest points you know parts of your team last year like i don't see the move the needle moving moves defensively that would make me feel like they're going to be much better but the other thing is too is like i don't necessarily think jimmy g's better than Derek carr like nope. i think a lot of it has to do with how much you think you know the raiders were hurting Derek carr and how much kyle shanahan was helping jimmy g we just exponentially saw what Brock Purdy was able to do, you know, <laughs> take them to a game away from the Super Bowl as a rookie, as Mr. Irrelevant, the last pick of the draft. Yeah. That kind of devalues what you see from other guys, right? Like, oh, yeah. Jimmy G's been to a Super Bowl. I think he's solid, and I think he's not going to lose them games that Derek Carr potentially lost them in the past, right? That I think is a fair to say that he can be a game manager better than Derek Carr, who always yeah, if, had that. if he's on the field. If he's, if he's on, on the, field. the yeah, if he's on the field, I was gonna say this. I was gonna be like, yeah, I mean, the Raiders lost their best quarterback, and Derek Carr went to the Saints. So like, what do they have <laughs> left at this point? Jared Stidham to the Denver Broncos. So maybe uh. he's the answer in Denver with Sean Payton. But I think that's about right. I think second seems right, but I do think it's the Chargers. You know, aren't that close until proven otherwise to the Chiefs and catching up because they just lost Tyreek Hill last year. 
they lose pieces every year and come back and are just and as didn't good. matter <laughs> doesn't matter yeah so like I, I think a big thing is though is taking care of your games like you have to go at least three and one against the raiders and the broncos i think to have a good yes. shot at the playoffs you can't go two and four again Maybe you steal a game from the Chiefs and you can somehow carve out a four and one. They always and two play them tough, Daniel. The every single time. They do, time. but playing tough is only fun when you actually get some of them right. Hammer and a nail yeah. is only a, a conversation. Indeed, yeah, it isn't really a rivalry, right? A hammer no. and a nail. No, and that's kind not. of been what it's like. Unfortunately, obviously, yeah. I don't like it like that. But no. I also thought it was interesting, the odds that the Chargers put on the Super Bowl. And, you know, maybe we'll have that conversation. We'll see after the draft. You know, I wouldn't say the Chargers are legitimate Super Bowl contenders as we see them right now with all the unknown things that we still, you know, have yet to see. But they have their odds at 2,100, plus 2,100. If you bet $100 on the Chargers at FanDuel, you would win $2,100 for those who are so inclined. I'm going to keep my money. But the Chargers are tied for the eighth best odds. Even though that seems like, you know, that's a gigantic number, they're one of 32 teams, and they actually have the eighth best odds tied with the Dolphins and the Lions. Same thing as before. Their odds are going to get hurt a little bit because they're playing against the Chiefs. And when you have the juggernaut and the king in your division, that's going to hurt your odds of making the Super Bowl, of course, because you have to make it through that team, and you have to make it through the AFC. But these are the teams that they have better than them, right? Chiefs are plus 600. The Bengals, Bills, Eagles, 49ers all tied for second place at plus 900. The Cowboys have better odds at plus 1,300. The Jets have better odds at plus 1,600. So they're assuming a lot with the Jets. The Jets have a great defense. A lot. If they had Aaron Rodgers last year, even playing as poorly as he did, they're well into a you know safe playoff range had that happened last year just because that defense is really good and Zach Wilson is that bad. And that's really bad. another part of it. But I think David... Saying that they're somewhere in the 8 to 10 range of just how good they are in the NFL, I don't think that's totally crazy. I mean, you could bicker and say they're the 12th best team, or maybe you you know just think they're terrible because you hate Brandon Staley or whatever the case is. But, I mean, that seems just about right to me. I mean, they have better odds than all but two, the same or better odds than all but two of these, or two of the NFC teams, right? And that just yeah. that shows you where the NFC is at this point. But that doesn't seem like it's crazy to me. It seems just about right. It does. Yeah, it, it feels right to me also because I feel like, you know, one way or the other, there, there's some wiggle room there with the Chargers. And like we've said before, the Chargers are always that 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 sexy team to pick. It's always the team that's, you know, so everyone's saying is going to overachieve and, and go out there and dark win horse. in the playoffs. Yeah, they're on the dark paper. horse choice. Yeah, on paper, all the that mumbo jumbo. Just <clears throat> This year, it seems like they are understand that the chargers have a lot of talent but also are waiting for them to go show what they can do on the field i think they are kind of tired of saying the chargers are going to be the next dark horse and now just want to sit back and watch the chargers do what they are going to do i, I think they're they're i think the the times of picking the chargers as the sexy pick are behind us which i feel like is not a bad thing at all yeah, and the other thing is, too, is the Chargers have six games, you know, against the teams that have as good or better odds than them next yeah. year. So that's going to be one of the tough parts of it. And things will change quickly. You know, the Chargers, that's the big thing last year that I don't think we saw, right? Them beating really good teams. That's right. And, and it came back to haunt them because, you know, even in the biggest game of the season, even with a gigantic lead, they couldn't take down a good team in the Jaguars. <laughs> And, I mean, you look back at those wins last year, like, the Chargers have to make a leap. They have to be able to be, a, you know, split at least the the series of good teams that they're going yeah. up against, right? They just can't lose to all these good teams because you're not going to have enough bad teams to get fat off of on your schedule, depending on how these teams shake out. But yeah, that is going to do it for today's episode. The good news is, is tomorrow is about you guys because it is Fan Mail Friday, and to make sure you don't miss it, make sure you're following or subscribing to YouTube for free or wherever you listen to your podcast from. And you can also hit us up on Twitter tomorrow at LockedOnLAC to get your questions in. You can call into the voicemail line at 323-524-7924. If you want to get your 30-second voicemail in, definitely want to get to some voicemails. So make sure you guys call into that. And you can also hit us up anywhere. You could leave us a five-star review at Apple Podcasts and leave your question there, and it will definitely get asked. You can leave your Instagram comment if you want, at Chargers on Instagram or go on our Chargers Facebook page, 
and put it there. You guys, make sure you guys get in on it because we love getting your questions for you guys and seeing what you guys want us to talk about. And we love Fan Mail Friday, so make sure you guys hit us up. And thank you again for making us your first listen. If you need a second listen, make sure to check out the Lockdown NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes. Big get for Locked On to keep those dudes because those dudes are draft experts for sure in every meaning of the word from free agency to the draft, though, salary cap management and more. Join NFL experts Kyle Krabs and Joe Marino as they take you through what it's like to build a successful franchise Monday through Friday. And you can find that wherever you get your podcast from and on YouTube as well. And make sure you guys are checking out the Locked On newsletter as well, which you can do at LockedOnNetwork.com slash (laughs) newsletter, obviously, because they're putting out a ton of draft content and where you can get the best draft content from the Locked On Podcast Network. But excited for you guys to be back here tomorrow with us and checking out this fan mail Friday and for you guys to get your thoughts on the show. But until then, take it easy and go Bolts.